Let me ask you a quick question. Do you trust your leaders? Do you trust them to take care of you? or to guard the wealth of your nation. When it comes to wealth, politicians are great at managing money, just not the cash of your nation. Instead, many have become masters of enriching themselves. They use privileged systems to line their bank account with millions while doing favors for corporate donors. And some politicians are so successful at stock trading that investing apps have created special profiles for others to copy their trades. So is politics still there to benefit the people? Unfortunately, it seems to exist to create a golden empire for the few, while the rest are left struggling for scrap. In a moment, I'm going to share some insane ways that politicians are using their power for their own personal gain. Before that, really quick disclaimer, I do not consider myself on any side of politics. I'm not conservative. I am not a Democrat. I'm not American. I don't even vote in the elections in Australia anymore, the country that I was born in. Basically, if I throw some shade on a politician, it's not personal and it's not because of bias. So with that out of the way, let's begin our story. And let's start with a little old nation of United States. The average wage of an American today is just under $52,000 per year. But for a member of Congress, it's much more, with the minimum salary set at $174,000 per year. But to most members of Congress, this salary is almost meaningless, as almost every person who holds this position is worth much, much more. According to current estimates, even the poorest members of Congress are all millionaires, and the 25 richest are worth a staggering amount. In 21st place is Dean Phillips, with a net worth of over $20 million. In the number 10 spot is Doris Matsui, who is worth an estimated $73 million. And right at the top is Republican Senator Rick Scott, who has an estimated net worth of one fifth of a billion dollars. Now, I am clearly not against making money. However, when I see leaders of a nation being so filthy rich, it does make me wonder how they are able to relate to the financial struggles of the average American, or at least how they are able to make the right decisions on their behalf. And one US politician in particular has lately been on the receiving end of a lot of heat related specifically to her financial dealings. This is Nancy Pelosi. She's the current Speaker of the House, a Democrat, and she sells herself as something of a sweet little American grandma. That is my why, why I am in Congress for the children. Pelosi earns a little over $220,000 per year to serve in her role as Speaker. But in reality, that's a tiny drop when compared to her actual net worth. In 2018, Open Secrets estimated Pelosi's net worth to be over $114 million. But today, this amount is likely much higher because over the last few years since the global health crisis, Pelosi has made tens of millions more, possibly increasing her wealth to well over $150 million. Now, it's very obvious that Pelosi is very rich, but it's how she became that way that concerns a lot of people. Either that or she's simply the luckiest investor that has ever lived. Warren Buffett is considered to be one of the most successful investors in history. Over the last six decades, his investments have returned an average gain of 20% per year every year since 1965. This is double the average yearly return of Wall Street as a whole, basically making Buffett the biggest investing genius the world has ever seen. But here's the thing, he doesn't even come close to Pelosi. In 2020 and 2021, Nancy Pelosi and her husband Paul traded more than $50 million in assets. And during that time, they returned a profit of 69% per year, which is considerably better than just about every trader on earth. Unlike Buffett, trading isn't even Pelosi's full-time job. But even though it's only a side hustle, she does it better than basically everybody else. In fact, Pelosi is apparently so skilled at trading stocks that one publication even named her the Wall Street Trader of the Year. So is Pelosi basically a trader? savant? Well, maybe not. Pelosi seems to have an almost psychic ability to predict which stocks will rise and which will fall, but so do many other politicians as well. Just before the stock market crashed in early 2020, a handful of US politicians seemed to predict this accurately, selling millions of dollars in stocks just before everything went down. Many argue that the senators knew how bad the looming health crisis was going to get and used privileged government knowledge to line their own pockets. So while millions of Americans were falling into poverty due to a global crisis that slow the economy, they were possibly abusing their positions to get very, very rich. But according to them, this isn't what happened, with senators like Richard Burr stating that they were just using the same information the rest of the public had access to. And Senator Kelly Loeffler said she only uses third parties to make her trades, even though her husband is the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange. But if they were using insider information, they were most likely breaking the law, as the 2012 Stock Act makes this kind of insider trading illegal. So are these 
these politicians just that much more gifted at investing than the most experienced investors on earth? Or is there something a little bit more sinister going on? Let me know your thoughts down below. These super successful politicians don't seem to be just a few rare cases because it does seem that if you are in a position of politics, it almost always guarantees that you're going to be a great investor. In a study published by Cambridge University, it was shown that on average, the trading activity of US senators outperforms the market by almost 1% per month, calling this kind of trading success abnormally high. But this kind of success probably has very little to do with luck. Just last month, Business Insider reported that at least 65 members of Congress have likely violated insider trading laws in order to enrich themselves. But even when they are caught breaking the law, members of Congress probably don't get very worried because the average fine for violating these laws is only $200 and is usually waived by ethics officials anyway, meaning there's almost no penalty when a politician abuses their position to make millions. But at the same time, a normal American can be sent to prison for life for stealing a set of hedge clippers. This financial success by politicians isn't just isolated to the United States either. In Australia, the current leader of the opposition is Peter Dutton, who before holding office was a humble big cop earning less than $60,000 per year. But since entering politics, his net worth has skyrocketed to possibly as high as $300 million. And in the UK, the man who will likely take the job as the next prime minister is Rishi Sunak, someone currently estimated to be worth close to a billion dollars, around double the net worth of Queen Elizabeth. A considerable fortune, much of which was acquired while he served in positions of British political power. So it seems that around the world, it is not an accident that a lot of politicians are becoming extremely rich. But the thing is, they're not actually all becoming rich because of investing. There is another method that they are using in order to boost their wealth. Lobbying is a way that large corporations use their financial resources to influence government. They invest significant money in political donations or to fund lobbyists in order to get certain laws passed or to block certain others that will benefit their ability to make money. And lobbying is a huge business. In 2021, it's estimated that a record $3.73 billion was spent on lobbying in the United States, with the biggest spenders overall being the pharmaceutical, electronics, and insurance industries. A large chunk of this money goes to funding the political campaigns of senators and other officials as companies try to get the people who help them get re-elected. And while companies spend billions, lobbying is generally a very wise investment, one that almost always pays them back in the end, with one analysis suggesting that for every $1 spent a company spends on lobbying, they get $760 returned to them through lucrative government contracts and federal support like grants. I've spoken a lot about lobbying in the past and how it is used to heavily influence how big businesses make money. And last week's video on the oil industry is a perfect example of this. If you want to check it out, there's a link below this video. But here's the thing. The lobbying money doesn't go directly into the pockets of the politicians that the companies are trying to influence. Instead, it's when the politician's time in office is over that they make serious bank from the companies that they helped while they were in office. After leaving their jobs, almost two thirds of politicians will enter the lobbying industry, sometimes working for the very companies they receive donations from while they held office. According to The Nation, the average congressman receives a raise of almost 1,500% from lobbying industries when compared to their previous government salary, with some of them earning much, much more, like Congressman Billy Towson, for example, whose salary exploded by more than 7,000% after leaving office, earning him almost $20 million by lobbying for the pharmaceutical industry, or former Congressman Glenn English, who spent years in office weakening laws that would benefit the climate, who would then go on to make nearly $10 million lobbying for polluting energy companies. But some politicians don't even have to leave office in order to allegedly win big from lobbying, like Nancy Pelosi, who accepted donations from Visa before stalling a law that would cut into the company's profits. And while it can't be proven that there was any kind of connection, Visa did give something special to Pelosi's family at the same time, giving her husband access to an IPO so he could buy in early before the company's stock price would rise significantly. These are just a few small examples of the billions of dollars being thrown around a politics and just a handful of people that are using the government like a game to be won with a very small amount of people coming out on top. Look, I've tried to figure out a way to end this video to put some sort of a positive spin on what's going on in politics and to say something like all of us can individually make a change. But the more I look into this, the more I figured that we really are living within a very broken system, a system where politicians can use their positions to enrich themselves and face almost no consequences if they're caught, where the power of big business seems to win out overall and where money speaks louder than the will of the people and where
where the pursuit of profit is ever more important than the heart, soul, and well-being of individuals. A government should exist in order to serve the people, but instead it appears that we're living in an age where the government is only there to serve the privileged, or to put it even more simply, only exists in order to serve themselves. So how do we fix all this? Honestly, I don't know.